everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. I don't know what it is about the Nidhi Sanji fan base, the Nidhi sisters, the Nidhi Sanji defense forces, NDF, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what it is about them making up stories, making up things, uh, and actually just being horrible human beings to one another, for goodness sakes, let's not just say the antis, let's not just say the people that they are absolutely against, but themselves, within their own communities, they are horrible to each other. This is not a good take, this is not the way that any of these communities wanted to be, honestly, whether it be Ike, whether it be Vanta, or it be Hex, who all three of them recently have had to go against their communities. Uh, Vanta had to put in new rules and put in, you know, let, we have to talk about this, basically saying, you know, you guys need to really chill. You need to calm down, not attack each other. Don't be uh, so vitriolic in chat. There are going to be more more mods put in here. There are going to be more rules. Hex had to say the same thing. I'm going to have mods in here, going to have more rules, going to have, you know, things going to prevent this type of stuff. Here is another issue, though. This person created a new weird uh, idea in their minds. Ruka Lee said Ike cried to Vox before taking his first karaoke because he was nervous and Vox was there for him the entire time. Vox was there for his second karaoke too. Vox hyped us up for Eki's first reveal and Ike's first drunk stream and now he hyped up for his 3D debut. Vox was there. And it says Ike Eveland, the actual Ike Eveland, had to go in and say, I never cried before karaoke. Vox wasn't the only one there for the other things either. Either It makes me somewhat sad that everything I do always has to be made about him somehow instead of my own accomplishments. This is probably someone in Ike's, in, uh, not necessarily in Ike's, in Vox's, you know, kindred or whatever, trying to push Vox as this savior style of person, as this, uh, you know, always there for, for his, his homies, always there, etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, he could be there, but as Ike themselves are saying, number one, I never cried. I don't know where you're getting this weird idea that I always cried before my karaoke's. Number two, Vox isn't the only one that's been there for me. A lot of my other friends have been there for me. A lot of other people in the generation and in Inidi Sanji have been there for me. Why do you have to make it about him when it's my accomplishments? Why do you have to diminish me and diminish Ike's importance and diminish Ike's uh, accomplishments because Ike does seem like a very shy person and just push it onto Vox as the savior. Honestly, that seems like a fairly measured comment regarding his apparent frustration. Kind of reminds me of Fauna's I can't be your friend comment. Sometimes you just have to remind people that there are boundaries and realities to the streamer viewer relationship. I've never really engaged with any of Ike's stuff, so I don't know if this is an ongoing thing or not. But in a vacuum, this seems pretty reasonable. Hell, if anything reads more like the fan is the one being problematic here by trying to protect their own, you know, project their own narrative onto the streamer. I agree with you. I think he's being pretty reasonable by calling out a fan, making up stories about his own experience when and then making it about Vox. It's just such a weird thing to me. Sure, he could have snapped back with less or not even at all. But because of this point, it's a lose-lose situation either way. Have a fake narrative spread or be that guy who has been seen publicly as lashing out on a fan. He's not lashing out. This is just me. Again, I'm not an Edie Sanji enjoyer. I'm not on their side. I'm not an Edie Sanji sister or NDF by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I'm very much hated by those or those groups. I think I'm probably even hated by Edie Sanji at this point. Uh, at least I'm blacklisted probably. This is not a bad narrative. He is not lashing out at somebody. He's just correcting them. In my opinion. Of course, some people can be very, very sensitive. And some people, you know, like myself, uh, I would probably respond that way. It's like, don't try to spread spread false narratives. Don't try to minimize or infantilize me by saying I cry at everything. Don't do that. Honestly, based, it must be frustrating to do your stuff and make everything about someone else. Dude's trying his best in a shitty company and everything he does, they say, thank Fox for hyping the dude up. Yeah, this is not a good take. A bit of a mini scandal happening on there, if you can call it that, uh, for Nidhi Sanji JP's Hakase. They use another person's thumbnail, or at least their art, on their thumbnail without permission. Kakarat's thumbnail by Junichi Kato. Ace Attorney's 123 thumbnail by Napoli Otokotachi. Initially, Hakase explained that it's Kakarat streaming, that she mistakenly thought it was a free image. When she pointed out that the unauthorized use regarding other thumbnails, she made an explanation at the beginning of a stream below. Sorry to worry you about the thumbnail issue. The agency has contacted the other party. Please do not contact them directly. This just seems like trying to get a gotcha on a Nidhi Sanji 
uh, liver, it seems like, a VTuber. Uh, a lot of these things, yeah, yeah, it gets that way where you actually think that it is a free-to-use thing. I've run into those things before myself. It's never, like I say, I always say this, it's Hanlin's Razor. I always use Hanlin's Razor for these things. Do not attribute malice. That's something that could be easily explained by ignorance. So this is ignorance of the whole situation in the sense of ignorance of whether it was a free to use or it was something that you needed to get permission for. Uh, sometimes these things aren't so clear on the artist page. They aren't so clear on Google, which is sometimes that's what people use to search these things. It isn't so clear sometimes. So I can absolutely understand this. Of course, a larger agency VTuber is going to get a much bigger, uh, you know, spotlight on this. They're going to get much higher magnifying glass on this whole situation. So, of course, it's going to become an issue. What this person says down here, after reading all the comments here, it smells something fishy, like there's something quite wrong, but I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, it sounds like someone with a grudge looking for something to be upset about. Regardless, it's the job of the managers to make sure perms are sorted out for thumbnails and the like. If the talents have to do all of that themselves, they might as well just be indies. And that's the issue that happens a lot with Nidhi Sanji. The freaking talents are the ones that have to go through all this kind of crap when that's why you go into an agency so you don't have to worry about these things so you at least have a manager telling you hey you know what you're messing up on this one you should probably fix this you know before it goes bigger and have that protect you a little bit at least you did something about it better than luca that's a misunderstanding of futaba was criticized as insincere but nuanced but it's not my fault attitude she hasn't even apologized on x it's the usual niji jester trying to put out the fire to prevent it from spreading this time, Hakase made a mistake by accident. Of course, she should be sorry. But that's not the important point. This kind of trouble has happened many times in the past, but Niji has not been able to prevent it. That's the issue. As a larger agency, they should be able to prevent these things. I understand that there are many livers and countless streams and videos, so there are limits of what they can manage, but still, they should be able to manage these types of things. That's why you should have not like one manager per every 10 talents. You should have one manager per every two or three max, I think, at least in a large agency like this where you have people producing so much content in so many situations, so many places, you should really have a better way of managing it. Niji Sanji has had so many top talents leave. You've had, you know, Pomu, you've had Selen, you've had Yugo, which was very good in the time that they were there. Uh, you have a lot of people who have left. You have uh, Mr. Rias, who was huge. You have Nina Kiyosaka, who was pretty big. You have Mika Melatika, who was pretty big. You have all these big talents. If your top talents or talents that have, are making you good amounts of money are leaving, maybe just maybe the problem lies with you. And of course, still Illyra, uh, Pandora is one of the top. Finana Ryugu in EN is still pretty good. In EN Obsidia, you, uh, this is Lazulite. You only have uh, those two there. You have Obsidia, where you've had Selene leave. You have Rosami and Petra, who have remained. You have um, Etheria, which is now three Theria, as a lot of people call it. Mini Parfait, Reimu Endo, and Alouette. You have Nina Kosaka. You have uh, EN Luxium, of course, as we know. Luxium is their golden boys. But Mr. Rias was one of their top producers. Top producers when it came to content, money, all that kind of stuff. You have um, other gens here, other people here. You know, Suzuka Utako was one of the high ones, one of the high earners. You have Roa, who hasn't been doing anything in a while. Gundo Mire, who uh, is gone because, well, the whole baseball thing happened there. That was just an innocent uh, mistake on her part. But since, you know, they get a lot of money from the Koshien thing, from the Koshien collab, they did not want to, Riku, of course, did not want to get rid of the money. So he got rid of the talent instead. Then you have Suzuhara Lulu, who was another top earner and top uh number right there numbers wise was pretty up there um from the mahi lulu it the mahiro lulu thing is gone that's just gone and if you get to this point where as a company you're losing your top talents then you start have to start looking it within and you have to start seeing that it's maybe a problem with you ida lien had that issue and they started trying to fix it other smaller agencies have had that issue and they've tried to fix it as best they can. I'm kind of surprised Vox has released clips of Luxium. I guess his fan base really is just isolated from everyone else. In turn, I'm surprised he has had that he, he Ike has had that much clips. It's not like he had that many meme moments from the top of my head. Parasocial content generally doesn't make sense in the clip in the first place. General audience, which consumes the clips of the, of the most, doesn't want to see it. People who are interested in that content would rather just go to the full VOD. If you look what kind of clips the content sometimes gain a lot of traction, usually comedic, uh, you know, ASMR super, for Subaru, for other places, it's a comedic one that usually gains it. But of course, the ones who are comedic, like, you know, you had Selene, you had Pomo, you had people like that who are doing some comedic stuff, they're lost. So you lost a lot of the potential 
of getting new eyes on you through clips. What happened? Let's take a look at what happened. This is talking about uh, Rara Pantera, all these other people, but the subscribers. English Justice just popped out and they're already, all, every single one of them, except for Gigi, who's going to reach that soon, is past a quarter million. They're all past 200,000, each and every one of them. You have Ian Crisis, who is, um, you know, in, you know, Nidisandi's side, is not even anywhere near that. But it's a male side, so, you know, you have a different fan base there. But still talking even about their top ones, Crisis Luxium. Luxium, of course, is one that's huge, but Luxium has had several years. Uh, TTT. These are the ones that, you know, are most recent. TTT. This is due to the lack of support. TTT is fully due to the lack of support. Because Kunai, Vivi, and even Claude with his foot and mouth moments do deserve more support than they've recently gotten. Claude has gotten a lot more support than Victoria or Kunai. Kunai and Victoria have pretty much been abandoned by Nidhi Sanji. I'm pretty sure their new crab game collab that they're having is probably even something that they pushed for. That they, you know, like fought hard tooth and nail for. Because Nidhi Sanji doesn't want to support them. The Noth. The newest generation is older than Justice, should have had an opportunity to grow like Justice because they are part of a large organization. EN has been pushed for so many years for by, by people saying, you know, Nidhi Sanji were, were the forebearers of EN. Nidhi Sanji were the ones that brought EN to everything, you know, like people pushing that kind of stuff. Okay, I don't think so personally, but let's say you're, you're right. What has Nidhi Sanji done for its EN talents? That if it is such a great, you know, pioneer in the en sphere why hasn't it supported its talents that's my question any color issuing tons of dmcas specifically targeting clippers around 2021 to 2023 then the selen event happened which soured the relationship with clippers and clippers are the ones that make you so much like money because yes they're using your ip and it is not you know sometimes it's kind of in a murky place for dmca and stuff like that but do what Hololive does. They understand, okay, Clippers, as long as you follow these rules, we will even let you monetize your content. Why? Yes, you are using our IP, but guess what? It's bringing more eyes to our people. Yes, people will watch clips like myself. I, I watch clips a lot before I start watching a VTuber to see if I vibe with their with, with what they are. And then I move on to the VTuber. That's how I got into Wataman, a lot of uh, Hololive JP, and a lot of, you know, Idol, FaZe, all those people, I get into them because of clips. And then you get drawn to the liver. You start actually watching them, watching their their um, watching their lives, watching their streams, watching their their content. And eventually, not a hundred percent of the people, but maybe fifty percent or even twenty percent, even if twenty percent of the people that go and watch end up giving a super chat or two occasionally in the month, you've made yourself your money back from whatever IP losses that you may have had with the Clipper. That's what Niji Sanji doesn't understand. The fa that, that face when Hollow Justice managed to catch up to the latest three waves in the GEN in both subs and clips. We need more GG clips, just a lovable gremlin. It just shows how memorable Justice is compared to the last three waves. I wouldn't take it that far. It just shows the type of support that Hollow Life has. The fact that you don't have to fear being DMCA'd, being copyright struck because you're using the IP of another company in a clip, which happens with Niji Sanji because they have copyright struck clippers before. They have gone on a spree of doing that, like from 2020 to 2023, which was a which 2021 to 2023, which is like really bad to do that. How Live has done opposite. How Live has been like monetize your stuff. Just make sure to, to keep the context. Make sure to only put the clips after the streams. Uh, you know, follow the rules of clipping, and you're good. And Nidhi Sanji never does that, and that's the sad part. So this is a little bit of a sneak peek, pulling the curtain back type of thing. Nidhi IDs Wave Seven was already worked on before they abandoned the branch. What is this? This, as you're seeing here, is a Nidhi Sanji liver uh, being supposedly rigged by somebody. You can see their full design here. This was going to be Nidhi ID. They're using Live2D. Uh, they're using uh, the, the ones that is rigged for Live2D, the, the rigging program for Live2D, that's what they're using. And they're in the rigging process with all you know the different layers and making it move and all that kind of stuff. I think it's still Photoshop stage, maybe. Might still be a Photoshop stage, uh, but yeah, they're in the rigging process. They were being rigged. And it's back in 2021, Indonesian VTuber in Japan was invited to Nidhi Sanji HQ. Got a glimpse of one member of the supposed Nidhi Sanji ID Wave 7. The avatar was in the rigging stage. The full video is this one here. It's still public. So it is a public video. So yeah, they got invited. They're going in there. They're doing a lot, you know, taking a look at everything that's been going on. 
basically the ID stuff, looking at everything, the designs, having other VTubers there. That's one of the designs that we're going through, talking about the whole process, talking about what they do with the rigging, how they do the Photoshop things, how they do all that kind of stuff there. And yeah, just talking about, I guess these are, these are in-house riggers that they have, which is interesting. In-house Life 2D artists. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is one of Nudisandi's Live 2D riggers. It's not anything like, you know, a doxing anybody or anything like that. This was actually still on YouTube. It is uh, a process that is interesting to take a look at. Just interesting to see behind the scenes. Does Niji Yen Talent have any full album or EPs? If you look at the timeline, how popular they are, especially Luxium, they could have at least one album already. Why Anna doesn't have any if she's become a music artist like Kelly? What about Luxium being the most popular group in the Yen scene? The issue is as you know, will be mentioned down here, it costs money to invest these types of things. <clears throat> it costs a lot of time, energy, effort, money, whatever you want to call it, things that Nidhi Sanji management, the Nidhi Sanji upper echelon people like Riku and them do not want to put in. They want to be able to rake in the, the dough, rake in the cash while basically working their talents raw and making sure that the talents don't really get any benefits from what they have other than, you know, having a large audience or for the ones that are lucky enough to have a large audience. Even if they really made an album, do they have any assurance that the signers, the singers, uh, will stay in the company for a long time? Since this will complicate selling the album if the livers left? Well, it will not necessarily, uh, from my understanding, legally uh, complicate things because it is still the IP owned by the company. The only thing is that, yes, you will have kind of like a weird uh, public perception of what you're doing. It will not look good for you to use graduated livers to continue making money. That's why most agencies don't do that. Technically, they could. Technically, they could just get a new voice. Technically, they could just get a new thing like that. But places like Hololive, Face Connect, all these other agencies, they don't see any kind of benefit to that. Even the Sanji, as much as people don't like them, they don't see any benefit of doing that because you get more of a PR hit than you do for anything good. Songwriters, composers, even if the library can sing and compose the same songs, that still doesn't make the end result sellable. They highly lack experience on their own unless they already have a big in music. Unless you get signed to a label, making an album is insanely expensive. Even if you go for cheaper local studios, I don't know if anybody in Nidhi Sanji has an album, but I doubt it. Lyra's probably wouldn't want to spend money on it anyways, and company payment would be years to approve everything. That's the thing. It's even just being objective here. I always try to be objective. Yes, I do not like Nidhi Sanji. I wish they would change. But you have Hololive, who, who actually puts out EPs. But look how long it takes for them to put out EPs. Kali, I think her first AP, actually, Kali, I think, was one of the few who actually did it pretty early. I think it was like maybe four to six months or something like that for her first EP that came out. But she was a singing reaper. She immediately went into the singing thing because before she was a reaper, she was in the rap game in Japan. So there's that. There's Suisse, who also has an EP and had several, but that took a while too because it takes time, effort, finding the right composers, finding the right mixers, finding the right everything for it to get it just right. So it is a commercially viable product. That is not money, effort, or anything that Nidhi Sanji actually wants to put out because, well, they have a lot of graduations. Let's just say that. Another short moment of the meme culture is right here. How did you access YouTube Twitch? Oh yeah, that's right, Google. Harassers, still watching VTubers on YouTube Twitch on Google, which many said is on the BDS list. Basically, it's a boycott list. Harass Rosemary Scarla when they eat or sponsor by McDonald's or Starbucks, which is also on the boycott list. So yeah. It's rules for thee, not for me. Pretty much nowadays, like, I'm not going to get into that, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, people like Nidhi Sandy, you know, the NDFs and all that kind of stuff, and people just weird harassers, they uh, try to get a lot of gotchas, and they try to get these moments, but yeah, they become a meme in and of themselves. This is uh, Shy Lily's artist, Riku, who certainly has had a lot of wonderful designs, as you can see here. A lot of cute art, a lot of cute things here, a lot of things that they create. It's a wonderful creator. Uh, of course, probably has um, a lot of people waiting for the designs to be finished for them. Uh, Shy Lily as well. So they're consistently putting out good content. Here we go. Here's one thing that happens. I keep getting DMs about an artist that heavily influences their style and model off my own. All I want to say is I spoke to them in private months ago. They don't seem to want to cooperate and deny copying or heavily referencing my poses, faces, and models. I can only do so much. If they read this, I want to ask them kindly to please be mindful and move on with their own style. I'm flattered they like my art to the point they're wanting to replicate it as much as they, uh, as much as they do, but there's always a limit. To them and all other artists, looking to build their own style. My personal suggestion is having three quarters of the main artist influences that you learn from so that you can develop your unique style without risking it looking like it's copying one specifically. Uh, 
they sh- another person said they showed up on my timeline last night and I was so confused how they could get away with heavily referencing just like that. I say heavily referenced, but I did some digging and most of their stuff is traced. Sorry, you have to deal with that. And it says, I'm also saying copying, but a bunch of stuff was traced and there were intentions of setting the traced work. I really wouldn't go as far as tweeting it if it wasn't this problematic. And what are they talking about? They're talking about this person. This person's response was to tweet a time lapse of them drawing art from scratch, trying to prove their art is genuine. I decided to speak up. Callouts are my last option. I do my absolute best to resolve over DMs. I will not tolerate nonsensical hate or threats over them. This post is in hopes that they do better. At Yuki Arts has been copying and occasionally tracing what I make live on stream. I spoke to them back in March, but they denied ever since covering it up as inspiration. And even though I blocked them on both Twitter and Twitch, somehow they managed to draw the piece dangerously close to whatever I made that day. Here's an example of overlapping the fan art I drew on stream on 2206. I'm basically uh, June 22nd on my birthday. And shortly after, she posted whips of it, works in progress. Next, proof of my sketching on stream a few days later. Their piece is posed in the same angle, pose, and mannerisms. The background of that piece is the same composition I used for the final artwork. Yellow flat lines, silly pink doodles. You can absolutely argue it's not one-to-one traced because they're able to draw. Still, my point stands. Here we go. This looks like Raora, probably. And yeah, it looks like a trace. Pretty much looks like a trace here. They're putting another one here where it's Riku doing the poses, doing the stuff here. And there you go. That was that was uh, Yuki Arts doing the same poses, doing the same style of our artwork, doing the same everything. It just it looks a little too inspired. There's Raora one as well. Uh, just basically they're showing what they're saying. And they're saying here, biggest concern was this one, which was going to be adoptable. The base model is heavily copying my Shy Lily model and the outfit plus hair tusks are taken from the new outfit I'm making her during my streams. This outfit hasn't even debuted and it's being stolen. It's beyond me. They denied it ever looking the same in DMs. Their own model, you can understand my concern thinking it looks like it's referencing my own. Core elements like latex skin, uh, skin suit, mid partition, ears are to me clear signs of it. Wasn't too worried about this as one I thought was different enough. And here, I'm, and basically, I'm getting a DM every couple weeks max. Haven't been replying because I was trying to forget about it, hoping that they just move on. Uh, and stop with the copying. Rather, they post time lapses in an attempt of proving they can do it themselves. The sad thing is, yes, I can see they're capable of drawing. I just wish they did th- that without benefiting off of my own work. Sadly, their response is not owning up to the blatant tracing proofs. Once again, uh, it's being masked as inspiration, study, referencing. I really wish they were honest about it and admit it, but at least the message seems to have gone through and hopefully they'll take, you know, better things. They'll take action next time. Uh, it says, I want to thank you for applying very respectful and civil matter, even though the topic can be enraging and frustrating. Of course, it is very frustrating to see these things happen. It is very frustrating to see that happen to anybody. And especially if it's work that you put your whole heart into and you're actually putting a ton of effort to get this thing done. It is frustrating to see someone just quite literally trace your work and then, you know, pop it off as their own. I hope that this artist, this person just goes on. Yes, gets inspired. Nothing wrong with being inspired. Inspired happens all the time. A lot of artists are inspired by other artists, but do your own thing, please. Hello again. We're having our next VTuber showcase today, which is, I believe, our 26th or 27th uh, of the whole series. We're going to be going until I run out of VTubers, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon. We have Golden Rose VT today, who is a plant Grimoire VTuber, 18 plus. So they do some, uh, either they don't want minors to interact or, you know, they do some lewd content on occasion. I think it's more they just don't want uh, minors to interact with their uh, content or anything like that. They just want to keep adults in there. Uh, they are, as I said, you're welcome to call it Goldie or Rose for short, plant grimoire that came to life on the search for missing pages. Hope you have a fun time here in my library, the Floral Archives. The first stream they ever did was on 10 14 23. They got affiliate. Uh, it, almost a month later, a little bit less than a month later. They're saying here, of course, you know, be kind of others of the things that they have there. Let's take a look at one of their videos that they are having here. Uh, following Christian Panic's Go Sunny the Stop, stop. <gasps> what the fuck? Love the long ears. Love the long ears. I will fuck your mother. Oh, God. It worked. Holy shit, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> She <laughs> said that. Oh God. Interesting. That Interesting that that actually worked. 
interesting that something like that actually worked. Uh, but yeah, you can see they have a bit of, uh, you know, fun going on. I think because of the language and things like that, they prefer to keep it on the 18 plus side. Nothing wrong with that, of course. They um, are having lots of fun with their... Uh, with their community. This is someone that I just found on my regular searches for small VTubers to take a look at. I also have a Google Doc that you can take a look at as well that I almost always post on my description or in the comments themselves. Thank you so much, Golden Rose VT, for being a part of it. I hope that you continue to grow and you continue to have lots of fun with your community. All for right now, of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.